Hey. Back in the 16th century, a dude named Marc Antonio Bragadin Hello. was tortured, flayed alive, quartered, and then turned into a dummy. Now, if you think that sounds a bit too harsh, don't worry about it. The dude was Italian, so he had it coming. Mark joined the Venetian Marines in 1569 to fight against the Ottoman invasion. The Turks were going after Cyprus, so Marky Mark and the Fettuccini Bunch were shipped off to Famagusta to prepare for their attack. When he got there, he beefed up the city's defenses and got ready to hold out for a long siege. And in 1570, after the Turks took the capital, Mark got a package in the mail containing the severed head of Nicosia's viceroy. Now this was done to scare him into surrendering, but they didn't consider the fact that Mark was in possession of something that I often fantasize about, a massive pair of balls. You see, instead of cowering like a wimp, Mark kissed the severed head on its voluptuous lips and locked in for the siege. But, unfortunately, he never got any backup, so about a year later he had to give up and negotiate a surrender. At first the talk was going pretty well. The commander of the Turkish army, Mustafa, agreed to allow citizens to evacuate, and for the next few days things went smoothly, up until the official surrender ceremony. Mark held up his end of the deal, but when he offered the city to Mustafa, the dude started tweaking out and accusing him of killing Turkish prisoners and hiding loot. He then quickly pulled a knife from his back pocket and sliced off Mark's right ear. Then, he called over his guards and had them cut off his other ear, and to make things worse, they took his big ol' schnoz. After that, Mustafa massacred all the Christians still in the city and hauled Mark off to prison. The poor dude was forced to sit there for two weeks with his wounds rotting before they brought him out to be properly tortured. Mark was dragged around the city streets while carrying heavy sacks of dirt and stone, all while being beaten and insulted by the Turkish soldiers. Then, they tied him to a chair and hoisted him to the top of their main ship so all the sailors in the harbor could make fun of him. Your mother has hairy legs! You're Italian! Your nipples are too large for your chest and that makes you look weird! You're ugly. <laughs> Mamma mia. So now after getting absolutely cooked, Mark was stripped naked and tied to a column in the town square for everyone to see. Then, he was flayed alive with the executioner slowly and painfully removing his skin. Once that was done, they finished him off by cutting his body into quarters, which were passed around as trophies. But if you think that's bad enough, they weren't even done yet. They took his skin and for some reason, stuffed it with straw to make a disgusting dummy and then put the thing on an ox and rode it around town to embarrass him even more. So yeah, I think the death of Marc Antonio Bolognese is easily one of the worst in history, but so was the death of John Brebeuf. You see, John, or Jean de Brebeuf, since he's French, was a Catholic missionary in Canada during the 1600s and his job was to convert the Huron people. His little mission was going well up until 1648, when after years of being colonized and being forced to deal with the smell of the French, I don't know which is worse, the Iroquois had enough and decided to fight back. They attacked nearby European settlements and either killed or captured anyone who lived there, so it should go without saying that the folks in the other towns were shaken in their little booties. That is, except for John Brubeuf. See, John had what's called Sigma Energy, which made him unbothered by the fact that his village was next. When the warband arrived at his town of St. Louis, instead of running like his Huron homies told him to, he stayed back to fight, where he was captured with the rest of the group and sent to be tortured. They started off by just straight up beating his ass, and once his hams had been handled, they gave him the old Mr. Clean by cutting off his scalp. Then, they stabbed him and cut his legs and back with their red-hot axes, but apparently, John wasn't really bothered by all this. The dudes were pretty determined to break his spirit though, so they dumped boiling hot water over his head as a mock baptism. But again, still nothing. This gruesome torture took place over 14 hours before they eventually realized John was just too cool to care, so they decided to finally end him. John had strips of his flesh meticulously removed and eaten in front of him. Then, they drank his blood and topped it all off by cutting out his still-beating heart and eating it while he watched. Now, this probably sounds pretty messed up, but apparently they ate the guy to hopefully absorb some of his bravery from enduring the pain. But speaking from experience, even though it may seem like a good idea at the time, it's never worth putting a Frenchman's meat in your mouth. Tu mon cœur, mon émoi. 
Revions vers moi. Pierre. All right. So the last death is kind of my favorite one, and it happened in China in 300 BC when a dude named Shang Yong was brutally executed for cutting off a guy's nose. So to summarize, Yong was an administrator known for passing a bunch of laws that made his state better. One of these was a law that said all men are equal in punishment, including nobility. Total hogwash, I know. This went over pretty well with the peasants, who were tired of getting screwed over by nobles. But the nobles weren't too happy since they like screwing over the peasants. In the field of history, this situation is called fucked, and it means that something had to break. And that something was this dude, Hui Wen. You see, this dude was the son of Yang's liege, and thus nobility. So when he got caught committing a crime, the new law allowed him to be punished like a peasant. Oh shit. Hey! Uh, oops. My apologies, gentlemen. It appears I'm in the wrong room. Hey, what the hell's going on in here? As punishment, Hui Wen was exiled out of the state, and for not teaching him that crime is bad, his older brother had his nose cut off. Which, you know, fair enough. I mean, I used to shoplift from Walmart until the cashier cut off my father's testicles. But anyways, unlike myself, Hui Wen was kind of a big baby about his punishment, and he held a grudge against Yang for years, all the way until he became the new king. The first thing he did was order Shang Yang to be punished with the extermination of nine clans. This was probably the most brutal punishment out there, and it was usually off limits for nobles like Yang, but his own law was used to justify the execution. Nine levels of his family were set to be executed, and the first ones to go were his parents. Once they were dead, the next were his grandparents, ideally both sides if they're still alive, after Game Game and Peepaw were dealt with, the next up were his kids. Any children under a certain age, let's say 12, were forced into free labor, but anybody older than that was useless and therefore executed. With his next of kin dead, Yang's siblings, both blood and in-laws, were euthanized. Then, his aunts and uncles were next, including their spouses if they had any. For level 6, his cousins going all the way up to the third degree were unalive. Then, for level 7, it was his wife, followed by her parents for level 8. Lastly, after watching his entire family be exterminated, Yang himself was supposed to be executed. And I say supposed to because he ran away before it could happen. Now this part is probably an urban legend to make the story sound a bit better, but apparently he tried to hide out at an inn, but it didn't work since another one of his laws said that taverns can't allow guests without proper ID. So, he was kicked out and caught anyways. Then, finally, after two of his own laws came back to bite him, it was officially time for Shang Yang to be put down. King Hui Wen had him tied up to five chariots, which then ran in opposite directions, brutally ripping him to pieces. Unfortunately, nobody back then took a photo of his execution, so I got no clue where the fifth chariot went. Maybe they tied it to his head, or maybe they tied it to his other head, but who knows? I'll let you decide. All right, Pookies, that's all I got for you. I hope you sick freaks got your fill, or at the very least learned something new. Either way, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.